how can you ensure your software is of high quality? Your team can save time and money by segregating test environments strategically, which comes down to running the right tests at the right time and in the right order. No two teams have the same path to production, but having a smart plan can avoid headaches later on. Each stage of testing is meant to give you more information to inform your decisions, but it's never the complete picture. In the following microservices application example, we'll start with the cheapest and quickest tests to find and fix as many potential issues as possible and save the most expensive tests for the end when we need to make sure all parts are working together just right. Want to see the path to production in action? The first environment code passes through on the path to production is the developer's local environment. This is limited to a single developer and their laptop. This is the easiest place to make changes and test your own implementation. This test environment isolates potential issues within a local environment. Later, if you conduct integration tests and they fail, then you'll know it's not a problem with your functionality. It's an integration problem. Identifying and resolving those issues at this stage will save you time later on. Next is the CI environment, where your code is put to the test. This is the shortest lived environment and it lives with the build. It gets created when a build gets triggered and torn down once the build is done. Here, you're concerned with the shared code base you're merging your code into. Does your component work with the rest of your service? The development environment is a shared environment with other developers on your team. In this environment, every service within the application is getting deployed every time you commit code. These environments can be unstable, since there are changes being deployed from different teams all the time. Here, we can begin testing integrations with other services. Does your service work with the other services it will need to connect to? Be ready to fix issues quickly or roll back, as any failure here will block the rest of your team from moving forward. The QA phase is appropriate for open-ended exploratory testing and security testing. At this stage, you are hoping to catch not just technical problems, but also problems with user flow. This is a great time for other folks on your team to have a look and make sure their requirements are met. Create your QA environment to be close enough to the production environment to catch any issues, but know that it doesn't have to be as robust as production. Here, you can test things that you couldn't in the dev environment, such as third-party integrations, like APIs or payment systems. The staging environment is a demo for all stakeholders before production. The purpose of this phase is to have an environment almost exactly like production. When you deploy something into staging and it works, you can be confident that that version won't fail in production and cause an outage. All environments can help you catch potential issues. Staging is the final check of confidence. By having the same amount of data as you would in production, you can do load testing without disrupting production and test the scalability of the application in production. Shipped. Your entire path to production, whatever it looks like, should be visible to everyone in the organization who is doing development. Every developer who is implementing code in their local environment should be able to have visibility into how it will be deployed into production. Don't be afraid to break the environment and get a red build. The whole purpose of this path is to ensure it won't break in production. So you should be breaking things along the way. If you break the environment, just fix it fast so you don't block others. We hope you enjoyed this video. Click on the blog link in the description for more information on creating a successful path to production.